Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. So yes, we are doing lots of previews at the moment to work around the NDA for the Intel 10th Gen Z490 launch. So I can't talk to you about performance or show the boards built or powered up or anything yet, but I can show you the aesthetics of the board and around all the things that are fairly obvious for us to look at. Have got a fair amount of information about the VRMs and everything on this board as well, because MSI did send a fairly comprehensive breakdown of all the componentry on it, on this, which was a great help. Uh, but yes, we're just doing what you can to keep you entertained. And let's face it, in these troubled times, we're all stuck at home. We need entertaining. <laughs> So the godlike, the Meg godlike, it's on the box and everything now. It's the uh, flagship. It's good to see that we've got Thunderbolt in the corner as well because it's not on all of the Z390s because it's, uh, yeah, it's just not. I'm not allowed to say any more than that. Um, so 10G Super LAN with Wi-Fi 6. So there is a 10G port on the back. There's also a 2.5G port. Um, they say core boost with 90 amp SPS. And I will talk to you about the uh, power um, around the outside of the board. But it's interesting that they say core boost with the 90 amp uh, power phases. So that will be good to uh, research when we do the full review. Um, dynamic dashboard, smart buttons, all of that sort of stuff. I am going to show you it lit up as well because I've got a special cable for us to be able to do this without us breaking NDA. Having a look at the goodies inside the box, you do get some, uh, all of the other brands, they've just been plain black braided SATA cables, but these are black and red, so that's kind of nice. And the main thing really that I want to show you in this is this M.2 expander. So it adds extra M.2s on the ones that we've already got on the board, but just pay attention to the sticker. And we will talk about that in greater depth when the uh, NDA has passed. But you get a couple of switches in the top, one's for the fan, one's for the lighting. Six pin PCR Express connector, and you can see by the middle here that it's got a couple of M.2 ports on the inside. Big aluminium heatsink with a fan as well. But if you have a look on the bottom, it's only wired as a eight times. So it doesn't go right to the end with the gold traces, but that still stands. So if it was eight times, normally an M.2, PCI Express 4 M.2, would only use four lanes anyways. Eight, two slots. You get the point that I'm trying to make with that. Anyway, um, the, it, the box is a bit light, if I'm honest, with other things. So you do get a, a couple of extenders, HD LED extender, and this is, I'm not actually sure what this one is, if I'm honest. But anyway, so other cables that we get in the box. Oh, you do get this, which is probably, it's, I don't want to say it's a, necklace because it's clearly not because it's a bit short and I wouldn't call it a bracelet and I don't think that will last as a key ring so maybe it's something nice you can hang in your rig or something it's a fairly decent kind of metal badge anyway but with the old dragon on it now I haven't seen that dragon too much and if I'm honest it reminds me of this that I built ages ago and uh, you may see that popping up again soon. But anyway, I bet even MSI forgot about that little puppy. The uh, grey around the outside is actually reflective vinyl as well. So when you hit it with the light at the right sort of angles, it kind of shimmers and stuff. It's better to the naked eye or with a flash anyway. Anyway, back to the box. So this is a bag of all of the cables and there are a lot of them going on in there. You've got thermal probes in there. You've got your Wi-Fi antenna. You've got a, an addressable RGB extension and you've got a normal four pin RGB extension. But in reality, there isn't masses in the box. It's not overflowing. And really the only premium part is this, which sounds like it may be limited. So board time. And then into the nitty gritty where we do want to have a look 
around the VRM area because it's going to be something that's going to differentiate a lot of the high-end boards. And uh, with the MSR, I can show you a rather lovely graphic that they sent, which is lovely. Now, all of the um, uh, power stage, everything, is Intersil. So it's not Infineon as we were used to with the uh, TRX40 stuff. It's Intersil. And you can see that you've got an Intersil PWM controller into Intersil 8 Intersil phase controllers. Now, just under that, you can see that they go out twice into then 16 90 amp smart power stages. Um, and it doesn't actually say there whether they're parallel wired or they are run on doublers, but it does tell us that we've then got 16 titanium chokes. But they also sent me this little thing, which is great because at the bottom, what it does say is there is a P, the 10 pin PWM doubler with output monitoring features. So I'm going to assume that it is run on doublers, but that gives you all of the breakdown of the parts. And we don't really get to see that level of information. They're not very good at sending it out. Normally, none of the brands are. So to get that much information is actually amazing. So as with all of the big boards that I've looked at so far, a couple of eight pin power connectors in the top left hand corner where you would expect them. And then we slide past the, and this is quite new for MSI as well, for them to be using the old school heat sinks, but obviously the surface area is enormous, but it's nice to see them. I also think that these top bits if you were a modder kind of inclined, they would be quite easy to wrap or put something on to get some kind of uh, accent going on. Although the overall look of the board is very understated. Nothing shouty, grabby, nothing childish. It's actually quite a grown up design for MSI, if I'm honest. And I actually really like that. Now, CPU fan one, you can see there. And then when we scroll along a little bit more, pump, fan and system fan there. Uh, now that does make me wonder whether is, there is a second CPU fan because they put a one byte, but I've not been able to find it. Then you've got a couple of pinouts there for you to be able to do voltage monitoring if you were a high-end overclocker. Come down a little bit, you can see another sys fan there and a thermal probe out. Then you've got the Corsair header, which is still quite unique to um, MSI, but props to them for sticking with it. Then you've also got the poster readout there, so the CPU, the DRAM, the VGA and the boot, that gives you an idea on what stage of the post processor you're at, and if it hangs on one, it gives you an idea on where to look at. Then if we zoom out a little bit here, you can see this I will show you lit up in a second, because it's actually a screen. Then uh, you do get an M.2 underneath this, and there's another one underneath this as well. I'm not sure whether there's one underneath this one, is well at the moment because uh, information's a bit, oh sorry, so one there and one definitely there, possibly one underneath here but I haven't been able to pop it open yet. I do believe it had three though, I'm just looking on the box to show you now, storage, yeah three, so yes there is another one underneath there. Um, over here, we can zoom in again, more fan headers, there are fan headers aplenty with this board, but that's a really nice thing to see. There are two external USB 3s. You did also get a USB um, 3.1 Gen 2 over there, so that's a nice spot as well. Uh, further down, you get your six SATAs. So you get a RGB addressable header there. You've also got the water flow header there. That's fairly new that I've noticed on their boards, but then again, I don't get to zoom in like this too often. Then when we power across, do, do, do. it's actually really nice to see them up close like this because it's easier than seeing it in real life. A couple of USBs. This you only really need to uh, use if you're going to be adding loads of graphics cards in. Although this does come with a switch so that if you did want to run multiple graphics cards, you can do. It goes through the same bandwidth, but you can run them in there. That's worth noting as well, because there was a uh, wiring diagram that they uh, sent us, which was a really nice touch. And again, it just it made my life so much easier. You can click through to have a look on the website for all of them, by the way. This is something that you may have missed because I missed it. Um, and that is your power and your reset switch inboard there. Really, really stealthy, uh, which is actually kind of nice if you're one of those people that doesn't necessarily use it. Uh, more fan headers, as you can see here, there's another one here, another one here, 
thermal probe sensor here by our switch. There's it full up with all of the connections. And then as we pan up, get a fairly decent, there is another fan header switch, a fan header switch, fan header up here. So there's plenty of fan headers scattered around the board and it might help you keep your cable in that little bit tidier. Round the back, flashback button for the BIOS, clear CMOS button, couple of USB 2s, then you've got a couple of USB 3.1s and then you come down to the USB 3.2 Gen 2, USB 3.2 Gen 1, internet, uh, internet, Intel 2.5G and then I believe their 10G is a uh, Quantia. I am looking for you. Network is a Quantia and it is the Aquantia AQC 107. Oh, and it's Realtek 2.5 gig up here as well, not Intel. I do apologise. Wi Fi 6, couple of antenna outputs, and then you obviously get your normal gold plated audio headers and then your optical out as well. So, with the magic of hot wiring, the uh, motherboard to kind of like force it to have power without powering it on because I've got a magic cable to do it. It does mean that I can show you around the board so that you can see that we've got an OLED screen up on that top corner. It looks a little bit darker because darker it has got a sticker over it and it's also got a mirrored effect and it's been kind of like I can get that ugly guy to stand in the way and it does look a little bit better. In a system, it'd probably be fine. And then you've got the ARGB section up there. Now, th don't forget, this is just on a demo mode and it will be able to do lots of other things and it will probably go through certain phases and change them as well. Although, oh, there we go, it's just changed. It did look good in the red and the red did actually look really good on the Godlight section down there. Not too over the top. Nice lighting on both sides. Graphics card's not going to cover too much of it, I would have hoped. Uh, but then again, you're not going to be staring in your rig that much. But obviously, we do like to be able to accentuate our systems. If you don't, you can just disable them and turn it off. So, a good look around the flagship godlike. Don't worry though, I know it's going to be, or we're expecting it to be fairly expensive. I will be doing previews on some of the other ones as well. And if you go to the channel and the website, we will be gradually putting more and more up. We're gonna do as many as we can on day one. But as we have to do it manually, it might take us an hour or two to be able to get all of them up that we're gonna do. The uh, written ones written ones that will go up on the website on day one as well, we'll all get videos eventually too. I'm just gonna be slowly working uh, through them because it takes a lot of time and it's still new days for me in the new place. Hope you enjoyed this. If this is one of the first videos of mine that you've seen though, it would be nice if you uh, liked, maybe left me a comment. And if you really liked it, maybe subscribe as well. But thank you very much for tuning in. This has been the tiniest one. Out.